If you have a furry family member and want to know more things to do throughout London, then make sure to check out this video because I'm going to be highlighting some incredible new places and things to do with your four-legged friend. Hi everyone, Ugo Rinze here with Onyx Property Team and Keller Williams. I absolutely love putting out my weekly videos to highlight the London property market and living in this dynamic, eclectic city. One of the things I've noticed being a property agent is how many people are requesting options for housing that are definitely suitable for pets. So it gave me the idea to feature another episode on places around London that you can enjoy with your dog. First up, Tower Bridge. Now, everybody knows Tower Bridge is that historic, iconic location, but it actually has historic tours where you can feature and see the Victorian engine rooms. You and your canine can partner and climb the iconic towers and discover the stories of the people behind the Tower Bridge, from the architects to the engineers, coal stokers, and the women working on site. If you are going to visit, make sure you keep your dogs on their leashes or leads. Now, if you want something much more upscale, you can check out the Egerton House Hotel. It's a boutique hotel in the heart of Knightsbridge where they have a bespoke doggy afternoon tea featuring chicken liver and beef meatloaf, homemade peanut butter dog biscuits, and carrot cupcakes. The cost is 30 pounds per dog. They also offer dog teenies, which are homemade chicken consomme martinis with turkey skewers plus canapes, and these are also 30 pounds per dog. Worth noting throughout London is that you can actually take your dog on the trains. You can take your dogs across the underground or national rail system, and as well as the southwest rail system, even the Emirates airline cable car. Here you can take them throughout, but they must be on leads. Unlike New York, where you actually have to put your dogs in a carrier bag. Now for top parks with for walks with your dogs, let's feature several. Up in North London, there's Hampstead Heath with over 800 acres of woodland and meadows. There's cafes and you can definitely get inspired. There's also Epping Forest in East London, which is London's largest open space with 2,400 hectares of forest and 50,000 ancient pollard trees. 100 lakes and ponds, and 50 distinct areas of woodland, grassland, and other habitats. Your dog will lose their mind trying to discover different places within Epping Forest. There's also Hackney Marshes, which is 336 acres of protected commons, and there's a public terrace and cafe. Throughout the Royal Parks of London, you can definitely bring your dogs along. We've got a separate video on the Royal Parks of London, and we'll include that in this video as well. If you want to enjoy a pint, then let's highlight some local pubs where you and your furry friend will definitely be welcome. First up is Smith & Whistle in Mayfair. This is renowned for being one of the dog-friendliest bars in London. It introduces London's very first permanent drinks list created entirely for canine consumption. There's Dog Tales, a Poochie Colada, and the location is opposite Green Park, so super easy to get to. There's the Spaniards Inn in Hampstead, and this is a 16th century pub with British classics, as well as treats and water bowls for dogs. It's close to Hampstead Heath and Hampstead Village and Parliament Hill, so check those out and enjoy a pint afterwards. There's the Duke of Sussex pub located in Waterloo. This is a gastro pub with signature gin infused on site, as well as a beer garden, and your pets will be welcome there as well. If you want to go aquatic, Go Boat, which is, runs a boat service, includes Little Venice, Kingston, Canary Wharf. It seats up to six people plus your dogs. For community gardens, there's a Dalston Eastern Curve Garden, which is a garden oasis. There's a pizza cafe and it's named after the old railway line it's built on. It runs a weekly support group for old, older people every Tuesday and your dogs will be welcome there. Also, there's Postman's Park, which is near St. Paul's Cathedral. This is home to a memorial to heroic self-sacrifice and includes 54 plaques dedicated to an ordinary person who died doing something extraordinary to save one, someone else's life. There's a small garden with paths and bushes and flowers and great place to walk your little pet. You can also visit an historic house. 
There's Osterley House, which is a Georgian country estate in Isleworth, Middlesex. It's one of the last surviving country estates in London. It has colorful formal gardens featuring herbaceous borders, roses, and ornamental vegetable beds. There's Marble Hill House, where you can discover the latest in Georgian life. It's located in Twickenham and has 66 acres of riverside parkland. It features a family trail along with Georgian games in the garden. There's a new playground, refurbished cafe, and regular free community events. For top London neighborhoods to live with your pet, there's Richmond on Thames, which includes the top places to eat is the Dysart Petersham, the Victoria Inn, and the Roebuck, where all, in, in all locations dogs are welcome. Its parks include Richmond Park, which is the largest of the London Royal Parks, has open spaces, woodland trails, and ponds. There's a dedicated and closed dog exercise area, and dogs are allowed off-leash in most parts of the park. In Richmond, property styles include Georgian and Victorian townhouses, in Warden, terrace houses, and along with modern apartments and riverside homes. Average prices in this area is just over a million eighty-seven pounds. Another great dog-friendly area is Greenwich. Its top places to eat include the Old Brewery, Goddard's at Greenwich, and the Gypsy Moth. For parks, there's Greenwich Park with views of the city skyline and River Thames. Dogs are welcome throughout the park. There's a cafe and children's playground. Property styles here include Georgian and Victorian terrace houses, period cottages, Edwardian homes, along with modern flats apartments. Average price in Greenwich is about 621,000 pounds. In East London, let's feature Hackney, and one of its top places to eat is the Empress, which is a high ceilinged 19th century gastro club with exposed brick walls. Its park is Victoria Park, known locally as Vicky Park, with green spaces, lakes, and a cafe. Dogs are allowed throughout the park and there's a designated off-leash area. There's also a playground and various sports facilities. Property styles in Hackney include Victorian and Georgian terraced houses, converted warehouses and industrial buildings, modern apartments, and newly developed housing estates. Average price here is $741,000 over the last year. In Southwest London, let's highlight Wimbledon. Places to eat here is the Dog and Fox, where you, you'll find beers, cocktails, and best in one Wimbledon Village for Sunday brunch. There's traditional pub food as well as a Sunday roast. There's also Hemingway, which is a cocktail and champagne bar sharing cocktails, wine tasting events, and has brunch and lunch. For green space, there's Wimbledon Commons, which is wide open spaces, woodlands, and ponds. Dogs are welcome throughout the common, but there are some areas where they need to be on a lead. The common also features a children's playground as well as cafe. Property styles here are Victorian and Edwardian terrace houses, period cottages, and spacious family homes, along with modern flats and apartments. The average price is $802,000 over the past year. Next up, let's highlight Islington, and their dog-friendly places to eat include the Albion, which is traditional food and drink in a Georgian building. It's wisteria-covered facade, and inside you'll find log fires and a picturesque walled garden. There's the Canterbury, which has seasonal ingredients and is rumored to be the best sunny roast north of the Thames. Here you'll find real ales, craft beers, and extensive wine list. There's also Smokehouse Inslington, and this is a barbecue specialist, influences in ranging from Argentina to Korea. They butcher their meat on site. For park space, there's Highbury Fields, which is a large open space with designated dog walking areas. Dogs are welcome off leash in certain sections. There's also tennis courts, children's playgrounds, and a cafe. Property styles in Islington include Georgian and Edwardian terrace houses, Edwardian villas, period conversions, modern flats and apartments, and some contemporary new builds and conversions. Average property prices in Islington is about £852,000. So what did you think of today's video? If you've got a pet and there's some things you're enjoying throughout London, then make sure to leave me a comment because we can definitely have another episode on some of the best places to check out with your dog. Don't forget to hit that like button and hopefully you'll consider subscribing as we put out weekly video about the London property market. I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.
Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to check out my other videos on my YouTube channel where I share great tips and information about the London property market and living in this fabulous city. So that's Ugo Renze with Onyx Property Team and Keller Williams. Bye for now.